Hi everyone, it's Lillian here and welcome to another evening of Creating Together. So I'm so glad you're here. It was kind of iffy whether I would uh, do a Facebook Live tonight or not, uh, just because it's just so soon after Christmas, but maybe you're like me and you're ready to get those creative juices going again after not being able I just find Christmas time was busy and uh, didn't have a lot of creating time right around the celebrations and I needed something to jumpstart the creative juices so thought you might too. So hi Judy, hi everybody who's watching, welcome. So um, as I go down to my desk, um, oh Karen you're even on, you said you might not be, so nice to have you here, excellent. Um, I just wonder what it do you have some kind of tradition or something you like to do between Christmas and New Year's this weekend here. I know in our house Boxing Day is usually our our down day. We may or may not get dressed, we eat leftovers, um, we read, we relax, and we don't do much of anything. And I know others love to go Boxing Day shopping, and others uh, have family celebrations on different days. So let me know what your um, one of your traditions that you like between it during this week between Christmas and New Year's. And let's go down to my desk. Okay, let's see if I can remember how to do this. There we go. Well, there we can see my desk. That's one step in the right direction. And now we'll just get the computer stuff going. And there we go like this. Um, and where are we at here? There we go. So I see lots of people hopping on. That's great. So maybe like me, you are ready to, to uh, do a little bit of, of stamping and creating. First things first, do you see this on here? This is the new celebration brochure and the new uh, mini catalog. And it is so exciting. This goes live January 4th. So that means next week. So if you requested it to be mailed to you, it's in the mail. So be watching for it. If you requested for front porch pickup, um, let me know when you'll be by and we will have it out there for you. So many of you have already picked it up. I cannot show you what's inside yet, um, but I can certainly uh, show you some of the things I have from it. And I am going to be showing you a sneak peek tonight. So hang in there. These are fabulous. Oh, you're, you're, you're going to want to see them. So that being said, that uh, the other mini catalog, the, what is it, August to uh, December, the, it, the last chance product. So what is left, um, stock up on it now if that is something you want. So hi, Lynn. Hi, Fran. Oh, it's so good to see you guys. Excellent. This is super. And then last but not least, before we get to our stamping, Stamping's Vacation is coming and it is an exciting time. It's an online creative retreat. So it is perfect, I think, for uh, jump-starting, again, your creative juices after the Christmas holidays to uh, just have a little me time and crafting time. And again, it's going to be held January 29th. But if you're busy that day or part of that day, because it's online, it's available to you whenever you want to do it. If you want to do it in small chunks or one big chunk or whatever. So um, you can register by going here. You'll find out more information. Uh, you don't have to buy any special products or anything like that. We're going to show you how to use the products you have and guide you along that way. So that is that. Now, last time I showed you the gnomes and I, but because I couldn't mail a gnome to you, I said that everybody who left a comment, I would put your name in a draw for these wonderful um, matte decorative dots, which are in the current um, holiday catalog. And Judy G, these will be coming to you. Congratulations, your name was randomly drawn. So congratulations, Judy. And tonight, remember, every time you leave a comment, your name will go into the draw for tonight's project. So tonight, um, I've decided to follow a little theme this week and share what I'm liking. And it's going to be what I'm liking from the new coming, the catalog that's coming up, either the celebration one 
or the um Jan Jan I can't even talk January to June mini catalog or it might be a combination of that um, so I've been starting to play I've had the new stuff forever and just haven't had a chance to play with it I've been starting to play and um, so this is what we're going to play with tonight we're going to play with this one called hello ladybug and it comes with a coordinating punch now just a little hint. I have seen people use the wings for leaves and so they could be bunny ears. So remember when you get these things, look at them from different angles and kind of see what you could use them for. Um, so the punch punches out this stamp and the wings here. Now there are some other um, it is great, Irene. I just, today was the first day I started to play with it. So you, you're, you, you people here are my maiden voyage. Now there's a, a daisy here and the daisy, when you stamp it, is this shape here. And then if you bring in the medium daisy punch, look at this. Okay, I'm looking through the camera. It really, look at that. It works with the medium daisy punch. So there's another punch it works with. Um, these flowers here, the two largest ones, you can stamp or you can punch out with the strawberry builder punch. I don't happen to have that one, um, but if you have it, that is also a, something you can do. And there are great words in this set, as well as the leaf and um, all that kind of thing. So we're, I'm going to show you new to me technique with the leaf and then we're going to build the card. So let's, let's, I'll show you the card just because it's so much fun. I really liked it. So here is the card here and then the ladybug and I'll show you how I got the dots looking like that too. So you'll notice that the leaf is variegated in color and I'm going to show you how I, how I ended up with that and I'm going to just show you the paper pieces I've used again for the card base is five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter so it is just a typical card base so we're going to fold that right now and bring in the bone folder and burnish that fold and then we've got that going and then we've got the next layer and it's three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. Now, if you don't like those eighth business, you could go four by five and a quarter, but that's going to go on here and it leaves just a little bit bigger border um, there. So that's, that's my thinking. And then we're going, this is the piece we're going to do a lot of the work on. It's three and three quarters by five. And then when we're done, of course, it's going to layer onto the granny apple green with just a narrow border and then go on here. So those are the measurements. And then I've got some scrap paper that we're going to do some stamping on. So we'll put that over there. We'll bring in this paper here. And what I'm going to do is use the Stamparatus for this technique. Now the Stamparatus is a, a positioning tool and it looks like this. It has really strong magnets on the back. I'm going to take them off. I have duct tape wrapped around them for little handles. I'm going to put one over here and one over here because those are super duper strong magnets and you don't want them to come too close together or they will take off and come smashing together. Now you can, if you have the cling stamps, the red rubber stamps, you can stamp right on here. But because this stamp set is photopolymer, what did I do with the stamp set? There it is, buried it already. Um, so I am going to actually, we need a little bit more of a cushion. So what I'm going to do is bring in, now you can either use this cushion here, like this. It's a bit of foam, or you can buy, upgrade. And this is this one here, and it already, it's just like the other one, except it has the grid on it. And you'll see me use this all the time when I'm stamping, even on my desk. So we're going to use that. And because we're going off the edge a little bit, I'm going to bring in a piece of the grid paper. Now this grid paper is cut to size to fit the Stamparatus. Um, and again, you see me use this all the time on my desk, but you could... Um, 
use just scrap paper if you wanted to as well. Now I'm going to put this here in this, so I, to, I'm going to mark that spot just because I want to remember that that's the corner I'm matching things up with. And why am I doing that? Why not tucking it into the corner? I could tonight actually, um, but sometimes you don't get a good image here. So I've gotten in the habit of doing my stamping over this way like that. And I'm going to use my magnets to hold it down like that. And then because these uh, stamps are quite sticky, sometimes they pull the paper up. Then I know that I can line it right back up there. Now I want the stamp to be right about, oh, I'm right about there and a little bit coming off. So now I've got the stamp in position. It's the clean stamp. I'm going to bring my plate in and just pick up that stamp. And now I know that it is going to land right where I want it. So I'm going to just tuck a stamp case under here, just so that it's nice and sturdy. And I want to stamp it, first of all, with soft sea foam. Then I'm going to add some granny apple green. And then I'm going to add some shaded spruce. And um, I've got too many punches kicking around here. No space. So I'm going to bring in this soft sea foam, the lightest color first. And I'm going to ink up that stamp. like that, bring it over, and stamp. I'm just going to rub firmly over, and now I'm going to lift it up, and there it goes. Now you'll see it's a bit white there. Um, tonight it isn't going to matter too much, but you know what? I'm going to show you if that happens to you. This is one of the joys of um, the Stamparatus. You can re-stamp it and hit the same spot. So there we go, like that. And this leaf does have a bit of white there and I'm not too worried about that. It's a leaf and a leaf is not perfect. Now I'm going to bring in the granny apple green and this time I'm going to bring in my blending brush and I'm going to pick up some of that granny apple green and I'm going to just tap it on a portion of the leaf. And I'm going to make sure I'm pretty generous with it. And let's see how that goes. You can almost see right there. I'm going to move this light a bit. It's reflecting on you. Sorry. You can almost see it's the, it happening, but I think I want some more. Just a bit more. So I'm going to add a bit more. Uh, you can see how you can build up layers of color here, like that. There, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to bring in some scrap paper and just get rid of some of that green because now I'm going to bring in the shaded spruce. So I'm going to close that ink pad up so I don't get mixed up. Open up the shaded spruce. And then I'm going to put that just down in this corner, like that. And let's see how that looks, see if we are happy with that. Yep, I think I want a little bit more, maybe a bit on the stem as well. So I can just keep adding the layers. And you can see how you could use this technique to make an ombre look or all kinds of things. There, can you see how the colors now are variegated in there? I'm really, really liking that look and this technique. So let's close that up and we'll take this off. Now I like to put my magnets away right away so that um, they are safe. And then we've got this. And to clean this when it's right on here, I bring in my Simply Chamois. I cut mine in half. And when they're dry, they are really stiff like that, but I just soak them in a bit of water before, and then you can clean it off, and then your stamp is all clean. So now we'll move that to the side. 
And there we go. You love the look. I do too, Marilyn. I'm going to show it to you on another thing afterwards. So now we've got this. Now we're going to bring in our scrap paper. And what did I do with these? There we go. And I'll bring in this pad, this foam pad, because I'm going to stamp the ladybug now. Now, when you go to stamp the ladybug, when you're in it, you're, you're going to cut it out with a punch. It's always good to see how is that going to go in the punch. Do I want to stamp on this end? Oh, no, I want to stamp on this end and I want it to be upside down. So let's bring the ladybug in. I find it's always good to sort of plan your how you're punching there. And let's ink this up. Now, if you find that sometimes your photopolymer stamps aren't inking up well, and when they're brand new, try cleaning them. Um, there's often a little bit of residue from the, the mold that they were in, and they just need to be cleaned, and then they will work a little better. Ooh, that one came nicely. So there we go. We've got that one. Now we're going to bring... Um, in the wings and we're going to stamp them in Poppy Parade. You could use real red or whatever. So that's, I'm going to stamp them. Now you see how I'm planning? I'm stamping it like that and I'm going to stamp them from this side. Just like that. Now before I punch it out, I find it just a little bit easier. Look, there's even a punch that or punch, pardon me, stamp that matches the black dots. Now this should be interesting, doing it through a camera. Um, I did it this afternoon just fine, but I could get my head right over. So we'll see how this goes here. And live dangerously and you'll be forgiving if they're not quite in the right spot. Oh, not too bad, a little could have been better. But when you're not working through a camera, it really isn't very hard to do at all. So let's punch them out. So we'll go from here. Now, when I am trying to line up an image in a punch, I try to get it lined up and then I squeeze gently. I don't punch. I'm not breaking any paper. And then I have a good look to see if it looks like it's okay. Then I punch. So we've got that one. And now we'll come from this end and do the wings. The same technique. Just gently hold it in the punch. And if it looks good, away we go. There. We've got that done. And we've got these two pieces. And we'll build our ladybug. So I'm going to, um, you know me, I like to add dimension. So I'm just going to sort of curl the leaves a little bit then we'll likely get flattened as they get in the mail but I still kind of like it but then I'm going to add some mini dimensionals just on the the bumpiest part bumpiest part now there's a te no, technical term right of the leaves and then just like that we're going to have a little late bug so there's that piece there and I'm not putting it on yet but I will put dimensionals on the back so she's ready there we go and then we're going to stamp the words so I've got the words um, hello and you can bug me anytime so I'm going to stamp hello Oops, let's get some more ink on there. Hello, and we're just going to pause so that it the ink transfers. And then we're going to ink up the other one. In black. Put it up about here. And then I'm going to clean it. So I could clean it with my chamois or I can clean it on my stamp and scrub like that. And I'm going to ink it up again in the Poppy Parade and stamp it with that. And you might say, what are you doing? Um, you'll see in a minute. So Poppy Parade, 
and I'm going to stamp it here. There, we've got that done. And before we do this, now I'm going to bring in some scrap paper. Now I could leave this like that, but you'll notice on this one, I decided to add some splatters. And this, like I said, I just planned this one today. I added the splatters after my card was done. So you should have seen me. I had uh, post-it notes everywhere um, to try to mat it off. So it would be much better to do it this way. Hi, Roz, welcome. So I'm going to put some scrap paper underneath because I am going to use my blends to do the spattering and they're a permanent marker. So we want to keep that like that. Now, I don't really want the spatters on my leaf. So I'm going to bring in this and just kind of cover up. I could do scrap paper too. Just cover up my leaf a bit, protect it like that. And now I'm going to use the brush tip of my blends and the cap. And I'm just going to flick. Oh, I really flicked there. I think that's likely just enough. And then I take this off and the leaf survived nicely good. And so there we've got it like that. Now we can start to assemble our card. So let's put some adhesive on here. And stick it to the granny apple green layer. Now I chose granny apple green because it was one of the greens we used on the leaf. And um, I tried the other greens and it was the one that I liked the best. I think because it was just a little brighter. It just sort of brought everything to life. But any of them would have worked well. And likely the poppy parade would have too. So I am just sticking everything down flat like that. There we go. Now we're going to bring our ladybug in and... Maybe about like that. I see it wasn't quite dead on with my leaf with the stamparatus, but um, that's the joy of doing it live, right? And doing it through a camera. It still looks fine. All right, I'm going to put that there and I can hear some of you saying, what about this? What about this? I'm going to do that at the very end. Roz, yes, that leaf is so versatile. You could, I can see it on so many different things. A whole card made with that in the background. Now, what about the words? What we're going to do here is bring in the scissors and we're going to freehand cut. And those of you who know me know that this is not my comfort level, but it really works with this. So we're doing the hello. I'm just cutting close to the to the letters so it's going to look like that and it's going to go up here somewhere and then I'm going to snip these and I want the you can and then I'm taking the bug me from the poppy parade one So those of you who know me, I like to be a little bit more exact, but you know what? The more I do this, the more freeing it is. Bug me, and then I just want the anytime again in black. And then you can just scatter the words across the front however you like. You can put them on dimensionals or you can leave them flat or you can make a combination. What I do is if I want to, because they're skinny, I can just cut a piece of a dimensional for any that I want to put on dimensionals. And I'm just going to put the bug me on dimensionals. A great birthday card, yes, it would be. Or a Valentine's Day card, Irene. There's so much, so much potential here. Um, and the the stamp set, where is it? Um, so, may your greatest wish come true. It's a good day. 
Um, those would work for birthday cards because you could put the happy birthday inside. Now, I'm not going to stick this down because I'm trying to remember what I did. So I'm just going to rest it there. So da 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 da. Yeah, it helps if you sing with this, right? Um, our grandkids, if they're humming, they are happy. And you should have heard them humming away the other day in here as they were crafting. It was it was quite hilarious. There we go. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to use liquid glue um, here. It is cute, isn't it, Judy? And you should see what I did to the inside of the card, too, because it just comes with whatever. Whoops, I just dropped, of course. There, I think I see it. No, I don't. I dropped one of the words. What do I have there? No, that's a scrap. I will look. Otherwise, we'll have to pretend. There we go. You can bug me any time. It is up by your other card. Oh, thank you. Oh, you guys are so good. Thank you. Thank you. And for those of you who know me, you know that was pretty impressive that I even saw the comments. Yay, thank you. All right. There we go. Just got a little extra glue there. And then here's a sneak peek at one more new item that's coming. And these are called the Classic Matte Dots. So they come in white, vanilla, gray, and black. And I am going to use just one of the black just to add a little bit to carry on the, the little theme. And I'm going to put it there. So there's another sneak peek. And then how did I get the shiny part? This is something I forget about all too often. And it's called Shimmery Crystal Effects. Now, Crystal Effects is like a super duper glue. Actually, it's the glue I use to fix my earrings or all kinds of stuff. But this one has shimmer in it. The, what, the reason I left it till the very end now um, is because it takes a while to dry. But it does make a 3D look. I don't know if you can see here that it's, it's raised. Whereas, um, oh, Wink of Stella isn't raised. It, uh, it's just flat. So this is going to add even more dimension. So what you're going to do is you're just going to fill in the space that you want. And then you're going to set it somewhere safe to dry. Now, how long does it take to dry? Well, it sort of depends how generous you were. I would give it a 15, 10, 15 minutes. Whoops, better stop playing with that. And then you get the effect. So I'm just going to tuck that to the side where I hopefully am not going to bang it. And I'll bring in my original. And then what? see what I did on the inside? The little ladybug like this. So um, it's just a fun card. I just love it. And I also love this technique. So I use this technique on this card here as well. So I use this as Fresh Freesia, Highland Heather, and Gorgeous Grape. Um, on this one and this is the strong of heart stamp set that is um, going to be retiring the end of uh, December and here's another one made with that same stamp set so it, this one is here um, through struggle comes strength and uh, you amaze me stronger than you know here for you um, I have some friends going through some tough times and this is a fabulous stamp set for them. So it's looking like you guys are liking this. Thank you so much. This is coming. So uh, you can be excited. It's one of my one of the things that I'm liking. Now a time for a little show and tell. I know that Christmas cards are likely all done, but I have some that I received that you haven't seen yet. And so I want to share them to you with you, share them to you, share them with you tonight. Here's one that I got from Judy and this uses the hostess set in the mini catalog. Um, and that is just so cute. And then this one I got from Sue. 
This was her first slimline card, I think. And I like how she used the strips of paper here and then this as an ornament like that. I got this from Carmen. And I, again, I love the traditional colors on this one. We're all going a little bit different there. This one, Roz is on here tonight too. And I got this from Roz. And look what she's done with the igloo. She's taken a circle, run it through the brick and bossing folder and inked it up. And then she put um she embossed it with clear embossing powder and heated it can you see the glimmer there so it looks like snow but i love that effect too and then i got this from uh fran p and it's gorgeous and this is vellum behind that cutout tree so that looks that's that shimmer vellum and i got this one from alice so, um, whoops, no, that one from Karen. I got another one from Alice, sorry. I must have it in a different pile. Oh, it's coming. Here's the one I got from Alice. So there we go. So there's different effects. You saw me play with this set a while back. And let me just cover that up. But she's even done the inside like that. And then this one from Sheila. I love the, the what she's done with this and how she's layered it the four quadrants like that. So beautiful cards, just lots of fun. So glad those, if, those if, if they inspire you, maybe let us know. Like this one here, I can see using some different stamps with the same pattern here. So thank you for joining me. Remember, if you want to do any shopping, you can visit my online store here or contact me. If you're shopping online, this is my hostess code. Um, Stay tuned. I'm going to be sharing what I'm liking from the new mini catalog and celebration. I'm going to try to share it this week. So um, stay tuned and watch this page. And if you are on uh, YouTube, be sure to subscribe and maybe even visit my Facebook page because some of them won't be shared live. They will be shared just as um, just as photos. So Thank you so much, and I am hoping that you all had a wonderful Christmas and that you really enjoy this week. This is one of my favorite weeks because it just seems to be so relaxed. So hopefully you get a little crafting time in too. So thank you so much for joining me. Take care. Bye-bye.